Hey guys, how are it going? This is Yara Spark. We're back here in another uh, build guide for Elite Dangerous. Here today in the Python, the classic ship from back when Elite first came out. Uh, great design since 2700 and has been serving Elite Dangerous battle community forever, feels like. Um, kind of sucks these ships really aren't as popular as they used to be now that there's new ships uh, in the FDLs that pretty much taken over the whole goddamn PvP interface. Oh well. Uh, let's get into the outfitting. Uh, my personal opinions of the Python are pretty much the same as it always been. It's basically a well-armored, well-armed, very slow machine. Uh, so please learn to fly a little bit of FA off and uh, know how to move them hips. That's all I can say. Uh, this is my DACA build, and it always has been my DACA build, because what other ship would be great for a DACA build than, uh, Doc and Delacy, because their ship stayed nice and chilly, and these things create a lot of heat. So, those giant vits in the back are basically letting you pew pew forever. That's nice. Uh, these, uh, large multi-cannons have overcharge 5 with autoloader. This just keeps the DPS going forever. It just doesn't stop, which is amazing because you can just kill someone so fast with this. That's what all three of these have. Uh, this one underneath is really awkward. I kind of like it because even if they get underneath you, you can still hit them. And kind of what's nice is that the way this ship works is actually can still hit stuff from underneath you. I don't know how. I don't know if it's actually shooting through the ship to get to them or what, but this thing has pretty good angles in my opinion. The two uh, C's, or two F's actually, uh, this one has corrosive with overcharge 5. And uh, they have um, a miss of ammunition with overcharge 5. The reason why is that I always kept running into stealth builds in this ship. This is also kind of an old build. I've had it for a little while, uh, but you can play around with this one multi cannon. You can either add, um, uh, I don't recommend incendiary, but you can if I guess if you want. You can add um, oversized, I might change it to that, just to add a little bit more damage, or anything else that you guys might want. I just do this because it keeps them up, um, it keeps them up on the radar a little bit better. Even when they heat sink, it gets their heat back up quicker so you can get them back on target just a little bit faster. Cause it will stick. So yeah. My utility mounts are pretty much the same as all my other builds. Basically, uh, resistant augmentated with force block. You can throw a chaff launcher on one of these and pop one of them off if you want. It's up to you guys really what you, what you want to do, but this is what I do and it works for me. Um, just so you guys can see, resistant augmented 5, force block. Uh, the reason why I run force block is because I run thermal resistance on the biweaves. And you need to counteract them. It's number crunching game again. So yeah. Uh, as far as the core internals, we got a reactive surface armor to protect us against kinetic. Uh, if you're wondering, I do have a thermal um, descent power reinforcement package in the option. But I do run heavy duty and deep plating on this. My power plant is. Um, armored with double brace. The reason why is that this ship tends to they, with this ship being so unmaneuverable people like to module snipe in it so you kind of want to be able to keep everything as tough as possible. I would say probably thermal spread would be a better option if you want to dock a little bit harder but even then you have a lot of wiggle room for heat because it dissipates it pretty fast once you let off the trigger but yeah uh, the ship is decently fast at 348 and 46079 boosts. Um, I do have dirty drives with drag drives. This ship has a awful, like, it just doesn't turn well, but it's still a great PvE ship and still is a very classic ship for PvP. It works, I haven't had a problem out of it. Great for ramming people, it's so heavy, I think it weighs over 800 tons once it's fully loaded so it makes a decent ramer if anything 
The frame shift drive is armored or shielded. I still don't know why I don't have five, but it does have mass manager. Um, still pretty decent. You can get up a little bit higher. I know this might suck for some people, but hey, you don't want to be losing your frame shift drive in the middle of a battle. Uh, for a life support, you can put it to a 4D if you want to save a little bit of weight. Uh, which I do now. I don't lose my canopy. I think I hit that store button again. Also, what's nice about this ship, like the crate, is that it has a 7A distributor, and this distributor is just makes his ship godly. Like, you have so much power, like, you have so much reserve, you have so much recharge. Your banks for everything is just amazing. Uh, it keeps every, it keeps your shields up. It keeps your weapons going. It keeps your engines going. I think I need to get it up a little bit higher. So I'm only on one roll on it, so I might work on that and see if, what it happens and I'll get back with you guys. I do have charge enhanced with superconducted. Um, it increases the charge rate, which is nice. I don't want to store that. And 6A sensors with long range 3. You can put 2 on it, I guess, if you want. But people like to run away from this ship at times, at least back then. So I put that on there to keep them up. Uh, you're not going to hit anything past 4 kilometers anyways with this. But it does help. I would probably say 2 just so your angles are a little bit better. But hey, it works. Uh, also, what's nice is it does have a 5C fuel tank. So it's 32 tons of fuel is nice and healthy um also with that shielded power plant you can as you guys can see it's a 7a so it does have a lot of power you have lots of wiggle room with the ship and i don't really know what you could put on this other than shield cell banks maybe but you can turn this into a shield tanker which is kind of what it's known for also sorry about that guys my game crashed as i was saying i do run a 6c bioweave shield generator I run thermal resistant 5 with fast charge. It helps keep the shields up uh, a little bit faster and also recharges them once they go down faster also. Uh, there's no really point of low draw because the ship has such a good distributor. Um, you don't really want to take any more away from it too. Um, I don't recommend multi-weave because it does add more time I think. So uh, do as you want but this is what I do. Um, as I said, I run a reactive armor, so I do have to run a hull reinforcement package that counters it. To get the numbers right, so I run a... Thermal resistant 5 with deep plating to, uh, get the armor and resistance up. Uh, overall you should have a resistance of like 60% or higher on the python, so pretty damn good. And your hull harden- or your hull integrity is like 5,000. Is phenomenal. Uh, I do run a 2B auto field maintenance kit with a 3D module reinforcement. Um, you can use that to repair that to keep your modules intact and your canopy. I don't have my canopy going out a lot in this ship, so that's pretty nice. And also for the hull reinforcement packages, guys, they are all the same. So they are all heavy duty reinforcement deep plating, other than that one that was thermal resistant. So not much to go over there. But yeah. Um, my overall opinion of the ship. It's a classic ship. I still like it. I use it still today for PvP. Uh, it gets a lot of flack because of its maneuverability. But hey what can you do. Um, you have to make yourself uh, something. And um, it's a great overall multi-purpose ship if you want to do it for something else. I know it. People use it for cargo, exploration, and other stuff like that. Uh, but yeah. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, please uh, leave a like, subscribe, and uh, tell me down below in the comments what you think of the Python. And if you still use it for PvP or what you use it for. I would love to hear. And also, if you guys got any suggestions for it, please tell me down below also. And until then, guys. Catch you on the next one. See ya.